Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. In this flight I'm going to be flying the MC-130 and it is a freeware plane but I'm not entirely sure who made this. I tried to look on the forums to refresh my memory but I didn't quite find it. But yep it looks like this in here. I think there's a separate 3D cockpit package for the C-130 and the, the game comes with a C-130 after all. And so that might be what I'm using in there, but it's probably retextured to fit the texture out here. Um, and you can see uh, this is very nicely done. So I wish I recalled who did it. And yep, yep, very good for freeware, obviously refueling purposes. And we are going to be flying from Los Angeles to Phoenix, a 321 nautical mile trip. The sound of the engines is a little bit quiet, but it'll probably be louder once we throttle up. And yep, I'll just stick out here, and we are continuing with the Apollo 13 audio. The PAO was in the midst of an announcement when we uh, finished up last time, so pressing play on that. We have a fairly light load here with the C-130. I'm just going to call it the C-130. All right, the so... Space flight meteorology group of the... Weather Bureau. Right, so here we go, throttle up. Conditions would be acceptable for Apollo 13's landing in the Pacific Ocean Friday, April 17. Oops, sorry, camera to issues. The plan recovery area, which is centered about 560 miles southeast of Samoa, skies will be partly cloudy with widely scattered showers. Easterly winds at 15 knots and seas about 4 feet are expected with 75 degree temperature. Helen, a small, weak tropical storm, is predicted to be about 500 miles west of the recovery area and should not affect the landing or recovery of Apollo 13. Conversation underway with Apollo 13. Let's join in. Flies pretty well. Uh, gee whiz, Jack. Uh, I... When did it happen? Over. Oh, gee whiz what? <laughs> what did we miss? Oh, there's downtown Los Angeles. I guess we should at least fly over it. Jack Houston, over. Uh, Raj, uh, we're checking into it. We think uh, we lost lock at Madrid for a while and we've got it back now. There's a... Uh Los Angeles Stadium and Entertainment District, and I think that's what this track is part of. Uh, you're getting a little weak. Did you say you wanted to verify what, uh, what your vacuum carriage is over? Uh, yeah. And taking a look back at the airport. There's the airport. Jack. Well, Los Angeles at least looks pretty good. 
and with decent frame rates at that. But we're not going that fast. Oh, that suddenly got stuttery a bit. But probably because of lack of clouds. Clouds make a difference. Oh, I missed the joke. Okay. Okay, hold on. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm, I'm rewinding a bit. That was a heck of a laugh. Hold on, no, no, I want that too. They're talking about the Fido, the flight dynamics officer. No waste water dumps. Yeah, that makes it easier. They've made that joke before, I think. Went the whole flight. I think there must be, it must be some urination joke. But I couldn't quite hear what he said. That was a wonderful laugh, though. So, saying goodbye to Los Angeles. Roughly to Pomona. Apollo 13 now 124,626 miles out from Earth. Very shady at, over there. Uh, I think there are more clouds than are being second. rendered covering that area. Predicted velocity at 400,000 feet or entry interface 36,210 feet per second. Velocity would build up at the time of perigee. 23 miles uh, to 36,431 feet per second. Well, I think we can just level out at this altitude. It sure looks good. Whoa. Let me go inside to the see. The prime recovery vessel Iwo Jima is steaming toward well. the aiming point. The we're getting beyond the flat Pacific limit, but I don't think we're anywhere close to uh, arrival time at the aiming speed point. limit. Is it uh, 9 a.m. Central Time on the 17th? Those downward windows are Partial nice. I like planes that have still holding a one of a millimeter nice of view. Mercury. In the lunar module cabin. Cabin pressure 4.98 pounds, holding steady. At 115 hours 16 minutes, 115 hours 17 minutes, ground elapsed time and standing by, this is Apollo Control. That power is still in red, I don't this know. Is Apollo Control, 115 hours. Minutes ground I'll keep the RPM in green. To correct yep, an green. error regarding mid-course correction burn number seven. 
The clock at that time was showing nine hours to ignition. Well, it's it's, it's, it's a turboprop. We'll just entry, entry letting them flick into hours. red is probably okay. At 115 hours 29 minutes. They just minutes. want to do that. This is a <laughs> control standing by. It'll be fine. I, I'm actually manually changing the propeller pitch. Fine. I adjusted the propeller pitch so it doesn't keep blinking in red. Don't know about the power, but... Nice look. Okay, that was uh, that was loud and clear that one there. We uh, we don't have a heck of a lot going on as you know. Uh, so we're flying over Pomona. That's Pomona. In front. To our left is a somewhat infamous San Dimas. Aquarius Houston over. Okay, uh, uh, Jim, it's about time uh, at your convenience for another Volts and Amps reading on the uh, command module. For your information, uh, we put six amp bars back in that battery already and we've got about 14 to go. It's looking real good. So just got the word that the uh, the entry weather tomorrow is looking better all the time. It really looks great. That's good. Well, Airport in front of us is Ontario International Airport, and that's the city of Ontario, not the Canadian one, obviously. We're flying over Rancho Cucamonga. I just wanted to say Rancho Cucamonga. That building's sort of that is so weird area there. It's a heck of a valley. In front of us is San Bernardino. To our right is Riverside. 
And you can sort of see the river that it's at the side of, but it's just my mind which river that is. Um, if I can get the silly moving map to show me the name, I'll mention it. This is Apollo Control, 116 hours, 35 minutes, ground elapsed time. Spacecraft position now 120,598 nautical miles out from Earth. Approach velocity 5,227 feet per second. Countdown clocks now showing uh, 26 hours, 4 minutes to entry interface or 400,000 feet above the surface of the Earth. Time to ignition for mid We're following I-10 roughly, seven. that's the... Uh, Highway below us, Interstate 10. This is and that should take us all the way hours. to Phoenix, I believe. Cabin pressure still holding at 4.78. Santa Ana River. So that's the Santa Ana River. Average, uh, voltage, our amperage uh, usage still hovering around 12, 13, 14 amps. In this seems to be uh, on this branch. I don't know if that's the Santa Ana River or a tributary, but I think it's sort of led underground or it's just dried up completely. Not sure. This is Apollo Control. Anyway, so to our left is San Bernardino, San Bernardino, San Bernardino International Airport. There's two weird strips there that probably aren't right. We will ignore those. <laughs> Let's take a look at the side. We're now headed towards Palm Springs. Yeah, 
This is Apollo Control, 117 hours, 30 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 13, now 117,810 nautical miles out from Earth. Approach velocity, 5,308 feet per second. So again, the highway is Interstate 10. Still holding at minus 6.24 degrees. Countdown clocks, entry 25 hours and 9 minutes from now. Ignition on the proposed uh, mid-course correction burn, uh, number 7, now 20 hours and 9 minutes away. Lunar module. This is the town of Banning. Cabin temperature hovering around 4.74, uh, 4.78 pounds per square inch. Flight plan uh, now showing rest period for the command module pilot, which began at 116 hours, about an hour and a half ago. At uh, 3 p.m. in the main auditorium at uh, Manned Spacecraft Center, Neil Armstrong, commander of Apollo 11, will hold a press conference. Uh, to discuss the various aspects of Apollo 13. And at 117 hours, 32 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Some choppiness and hesitancy here that I don't understand why, I mean... It'd be weird for it to be choppier here than in uh, Los Angeles. Something around here that is loaded like this, but unloaded like this, is causing a whole heck of a lot of... <laughs> um, I'm gonna guess that uh, it, it, it's often down to one building or something like that, which is just choking everything, I swear. Well, it isn't the wind turbines, because there are a lot of those hanging around. This is Apollo Control. And over to the right there, nestled among the hills, or mountains really, is Palm Springs. Quite a place, huh? Just past uh, this little thin pass. <laughs> You know, there's a huge Los Angeles Valley, all those cities. And then this thin little pass, all these. I think they're all wind turbines. And then there's Palm Springs. Oh, whatever it was, we've passed it, you see, now there's no difference between these two modes. The mission control and if I set it off, 
not a whole Chicago lot of different side trade will suspend trading well we'll just set that off now for a moment of tribute to the courage may need to turn it on at Phoenix or something and a prayer for their safe return I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of stuff going on in the desert at uh, 117 hours 53 minutes ground elapsed time and standing by this is Apollo control <laughs> This is Apollo Control, 118 hours, 8 minutes, ground elapsed time. Uh, at the present time in the Houston News Center main auditorium is a briefing just beginning with Mr. Keith McClung of North American Rockwell, who will discuss the uh, various hardware aspects of the Friday morning entry of Apollo 13. This is Apollo Control standing well, by. That's pretty nice. This is Earth, over. <laughs> Aquarius, this is Earth. They don't use that nearly enough. Uh, Roger, uh, Earth is here also. And uh, Jim, it's time for another one of those uh, volt amp checks uh, for your information. We do a lot of those volt amp checks. Amp now. now, if we look... Oh, okay, so that one thing is behind us, obviously. Now, let's see, where exactly is it? 17... Okay, right there. 40. And if I look like that, it drops down to half. See, there's one little thing. <laughs> it's one little thing that makes that much difference in the frame rate. So, whenever people quote the frame rate in something like this, you know, it's tough. Because if just one scenery item can cause that kind of difference and I think it is I think it is just one thing that got rendered okay, copy that, Jim. the results are just inconsistent Jim Houston uh, have you guys put on any extra clothes to try and uh, ward off the uh, nip of Jack Frost over uh, well, the Yeah, that's that's understandable. Uh, you can you can always use them if you have to. Uh, I guess it's uh, pretty hard to get uh, extra coveralls on them. Huh? We're over the city of Indio. Well, Joe, I don't think we have any extra uh, in-flight garbage support, but we're going to check right now. Well, stand by. I think that water there is the Salton Sea. Is that right? I don't know if it shows in this map at all. Doesn't mention the names of things, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. The interstate is rather dusty past this point, but there it goes stretching through the desert. Definitely salt and sea. Roger that, Jim. We are uh, trying to uh, get the procedures uh, finished and up to you as quickly as we can. Uh, they exist. What's going on now is that uh, the guys are uh, running them in the uh, CMS element. There's a heck of a lot of procedures they're going to read up. Over. 
So the surface of the Salton Sea is 236 feet below sea level. But it's, I don't think, very deep overall. Its maximum depth is 43 feet. I'm reading Wikipedia, of course. Well, it's nice having photo scenery of deserts in particular, oddly enough, because otherwise they get really monotonous real quick. But as you can see, the desert uh, without stock textures is somewhat more varied and interesting to look at. I mean, it's not a city, but still. Well, now we're getting frame rates. <laughs> Nothing like a desert to uh, cut down on the extra stuff, huh? Notch of elevator trim sure seconds, made a difference. Which, uh, according to the countdown clock, is some 23 hours 22 minutes from now. We've got a uh, mid-course correction burn of something less than two feet per second, which may or may not be done. Uh, some 18 hours 22 minutes from now, uh, which is entry minus five hours. Cabin pressure aboard Aquarius, holding around 4.7 pounds. Communication still rather scratchy uh, from time to time. Uh, spacecraft communicator Joe Kerwin requests the crew to give uh, amperage and voltage readouts on the battery charge that's going on and has been uh, underway since about 112 hours. At uh, 119 hours, 19 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 119 hours, 44 minutes ground elapsed time, 22 hours, 56 minutes to entry interface, 400,000 feet, 17 hours, 56 minutes to uh, next mid-course correction if it is indeed performed. Cabin pressure in the lunar module holding at 
4.94 pounds per square inch. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the cabin, one-tenth of a millimeter of mercury. And in the consumables for the lunar, lunar module, uh, remaining lifetime of various consumables. Total usable remaining water, 111.4 pounds. The present usage rate is two and a half pounds an hour. And uh, the time remaining at this present rate, 163 hours uh, ground elapsed time when the water would be defunct. Defunct. <laughs> Oxygen aboard, 33.43 nice choice of words. pounds, using 0.26 pounds uh, per hour. This uh, oxygen would uh, run out at 247 hours. Electrical power, total usable remaining amp hours, 974, using about 17.9 amp hours or amps at the present time. This uh, would be exhausted at 173 hours ground elapsed time. Lithium hydroxide. Sounds like they've got a lot. Total remaining uh, 180 hours. I mean, 180 hours. This is for the lunar module. Standard consumables does not include the lifetime on the portable life support systems. At uh, 119 hours, 46 minutes, ground elapsed time and standing by, this is Apollo Control. Aquarius, Houston, over. Go ahead. Guess what? What? Bolts and amps time, Jim. Uh, Aquarius Houston, what? Over. 39.4, Are you really going up there and looking at them? <laughs> Copy, Jim. I think it's because it's the same reading as last time. Aquarius Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, Jim, uh, we show the uh, suit circuit relief valve is uh, is back in the auto position. And, uh, Boy, like I can't help but feel for, that for stretching power over. lines across the desert might not be the most efficient thing ever. save a lot of trouble just building some solar power plants <laughs> if necessary wherever okay, thank you, Jim. heck even nuclear anything well I mean I guess you couldn't cool it with water very easily around here but still uh, power distribution
mid stage batteries now as we continue to charge the uh, battery A in the command module. Lunar module cabin temperature uh, 51. Oh, I was just saying should be solar, and apparently there's a Genesis solar field here. I don't know why it looks like sticks, but those sticks are part of the Genesis solar field. I get the feeling that they ought not to look like sticks. Okay, Aquarius Houston, how do you read? Hmm. Great loud and clear. Okay, and you're real good. It's a it's a pleasure not to have all that noise. Not sure. Uh, let me tell you what I want to do, Jim. Uh, as I said, we're not going to give you detailed procedures now. What we expect to have for you shortly uh, are, are procedures uh, which we'll try and get up to you. There don't seem the to be any power lines to it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have we, have, we have power lines over there. Sort of a flight plan thing, which will have the times of all the major events and any Power lines must be leading to the silver field. Uh, oh, wait, there's a line here. Oh, I so guess forth, that line might be something. peculiar to our configuration and which therefore you won't find in the checklist. This, for instance, will be true of the way we power up the, the command module. And uh, second, of course, we'll have any red lines to the checklist so that you can enter the, uh, the, the checklist where possible to, to perform functions. And the, the timeline will simply refer you to the checklist when that's appropriate. Okay? Okay, sounds good. Uh you're going to give me an overall timeline now, I think, is that right? That's a firm. I'm going to first of all just uh, uh, quickly run through the uh, the times of the uh, of the major events, and then we'll go back and fill in some of the details. Okay, uh, entry interface is at 142 hours and 40 minutes. Six and a half hours, roughly, prior to that, or at about 136.10, we'll uh, start this whole thing going by. Uh, uh, applying IMU heater power by uh, checking the uh, CMRCS temperatures and preheating the CMRCS if required and uh, we suspect we'll probably want to do that. Uh, we'll have detailed procedures up for it later. And about six hours prior to EI or about 136.40 uh, we will commence okay uh, so right in front of us is the town of Blythe the, uh, and the that's the Colorado River the eggs, so the we will cross uh, over into uh, Arizona but beyond that a checklist which you have used for the previous mid course uh, then shortly just before five hours prior to EI or at about 13740 we'll want you in the attitude for a lem eggs body axis alignment using the earth terminator like we did before and uh, as soon as we have that, we'll perform MCC-7, which looks like uh, now about a two foot per second burn, or about 15 seconds of uh, RCS. And I'm told that it's, uh, it's down to one and a half now. So it's comfortably within the RCS margin. Okay, when we do that, we'll uh, immediately start the maneuver to the uh, service module jettison attitude, which will be in plane since we're jettisoning it earlier than we usually do, we don't need and don't want the out-of-plane component. Uh, so it'll be in plane with the uh, service module pointed back out along the radius vector. Oh. We will uh, then commence to uh, get the command module ready for service module SEP, including uh, command module RCS checkout and a hot fire. And at uh, approximately four hours and 30 minutes, Prior to EI or 138.10, we'll jettison the service module. Uh, we'll pitch the lem up until we acquire the service module in the uh, hatch. We'll try and get some photographs, but we're not going to fool around with lem translation maneuvers for pictures because we don't want to fool up your fall up your flight path angle at that time. Okay, that gives us two hours to. Uh, more or less uh, open time here to uh, finish up if we're late on that to uh, run over the checklists uh, and prepare for powering up the command module. We're going to start the command module full power up at uh, EI minus two hours and 30 minutes or 14010 GET. We'll get the uh, computer on the line, we'll get the IMU up, we'll uh, start up linking interstate vectors and 
so forth, and uh, aligning the uh, command module platform. Uh, at about one hour and 30 minutes at the latest, giving us an hour to do this command module stuff, we will start the maneuver to the LEM jettison attitude. Okay, uh, passing over to Colorado River, close out the LEM and we are in Arizona. pressure integrity check and at uh, EI minus one hour not that you notice a huge difference in the landscape minutes, overall the land. but as uh, soon as we do that you can start the maneuver to the entry attitude when you're there do a sextant star check take down the optics and uh, at that point we'll be giving you your final entry pad you can initialize the EMS and you will essentially be right back on the checklist at that point there's one uh, one little difference from your nominal entry. Uh, you're a little bit earlier in the morning, so it's, uh, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be nighttime when you get to the eye. However, we're, we're fortunate enough to have the moon in the perfect position for a uh, horizon check. We'll give you a moon check instead of a horizon check, and you can track it right down to moon set, which is going to be an EI roughly minus three minutes. And uh, that's it for the quick timeline. Do you have any questions right now? Please, uh, Joe, right now, we'll have to look over the timeline uh, and uh, think about it for a little bit. Okay, uh, real fine. We're ready to uh, to talk in uh, some more detail about the alignment procedures, the uh, CM power-up procedures, and so forth, but why don't we give you a few minutes to, to digest what you've already heard. Okay, Jim. Uh, I didn't want to talk about that because we're uh, we're not quite ready to uh, to recommend a uh, a procedure. Uh, we can't power up the CMRCS per the normal checklist on the limb power because we haven't got quite enough amps. Uh, it may be that we'll want you to uh, to heat uh, to do the preheat uh, one ring at a time, and we're looking at that. Uh, Oop, a little bit of a stutter there. Is that, we, that we may want to take down limb power well, at that so time, do running the preheat. Well. Um, uh, it's probably just loading scenery areas. Take it down finally. Over. Okay, understand. Second question. Uh, when uh, we finished MCC 7, uh, that maneuver to SM jet attitude will be angles given to us by you. What's this you tiny town here? Ball, right? That's affirmative. Port uh, site. Uh, once Port we get that site. And, and get a time hack on it, Apparently uh, that's a granite uh, mountain. The, uh, the good 511 meters, here, though, I don't know if it counts as a mountain. Eggs, eggs, eight ball attitudes for the, uh, Silly moving map doesn't name mountains half the time when they're 5,000 meters, but uh, it'll give me this 500 meter one. We are going to pass you up a, uh, a, a moon sun P52 type alignment. We'll have eggs, eight ball attitudes for those, and we'll be able to uplink to the command module once we get the computer up. Uh, a preferred refs mat which is uh, which will be uh, identical to the uh, to the lem attitude uh, at the time of the burn and uh, we'll go into details on that later okay just have my one I'll get here well there of uh, of what kind of maneuvers to let you do to uh, photograph the limb. 
I mean the s service module. We we consider it uh, quite low priority. Uh, the feeling is that uh, it it'll be real nice to get pictures of the service module, but they're not required uh, for our uh, our troubleshooting program. Uh, as far as the uh, the uh, uh, attitude control authority and so forth. Uh, we'll get you more detailed word on that later. We are working it. It appears that uh, using the ACA instead of the TTCA after service module jet will give you uh, excellent attitude uh, control authority and that's what we recommend. Okay, I'm also going to use an at an an hold uh, uh, configuration to keep the uh, attitude so uh, during the uh, left jet attitude. That's a firm. Uh, we uh, we are probably going to recommend a tight bit, a tight dead band ags attitude hold for that. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, the star check at the uh, entry attitude is it a uh, sexton star check or a coa star check? Uh, it'll probably be a sexton star check, uh, uh, Jim. Uh, it it really depends on how good that platform is that we get. We expect it to be plenty good enough for a sexton star check. While we're on that okay. subject, Jim, uh, I want to mention one thing to uh, to Jack. Uh, as I said, this uh, CSM alignment procedure we're we're going to recommend is a uh, is a moon sun, and uh, there are sun filters uh, stowed. They're stowed in uh, in compartment R1. Uh, however, they're for the uh, for the telescope only, of course, and not the not the sextant. One is for the long eye relief piece. Uh, the other for the uh, for the normal eyepiece and uh, if he has any questions about that uh, we'll be glad to talk about it. Okay. And uh, <coughs> because uh, it'd be too late to do much about a uh, a hatch integrity check if it fails. You want us to uh, have our suits on sometime during this period. We're not too far okay, away from uh, Phoenix Jim, now. Uh, we're laying for you on uh, that one. Uh, it's a subject we want to do. Uh, at the exact cluster you. of stuff right at the uh, edge of the map there. Considering it, and our feelings are, uh, of course, it's up to you. But as we see the pros and cons, uh, you just put your finger on the pro. Uh, we do a hatch integrity check shortly before EI minus one hour, and uh, if we busted, uh, you'd have a, a hard time scrambling into the suits. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the disadvantages of wearing the suits are that they uh, uh, they might slow you down considerably, not, not even counting the time to don them. And uh, someone has even raised the concern that such and such a period of time in the suits, uh, you might get warm, and we might have to power up the uh, suit loop to ventilate the suits, and we don't particularly want to do that because it costs quite a bit of power. Uh, consequently, our recommendation was going to be that we not wear the suits, since we have uh, no reason to believe that uh, that the integrity check would show us anything but a uh, but a slightly increased leak rate, and uh, we can certainly hack that. What do you think, over complicated situation no, complicated whether to wear the suits or not. I see no reason why, uh, why we need the suits. And uh, one thing we're going to do uh, during our spare time is to uh, is to practice putting that hatch on uh, to make sure we get it on and locked. Okay, real good. And with that precaution, uh, I think we can... I think they're referring to the, the hatch between the LEM and the CM, not the one facing the outside that they climb out of when they splash yeah, down. The we had about the timeline you gave us. Okay, uh, let me uh, take a check here and see if there's anything anybody else wants to input to you right now. Query. 
Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. Raj, uh, one detail that I thought uh, you ought to know about the uh, service module jet is that we're going to recommend a, uh, a push-pull maneuver. Uh, that is, in the attitude I described, uh, we'll want you to uh, uh, go half a foot per second plus X on the uh, LEM, then jettison the service module, then go half a foot per second minus X, which will be less time because you're suddenly a heck of a lot lighter. Over. Okay, I understand you want me to go half a foot per second plus X, jet to uh, a service module, then go half a second, uh, half a foot per second minus X. That's a firm. We think that'll give you plenty of separation and also uh, will be a slow enough rate so that you'll have a chance to get some photos. Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, one more thing we want to update you on uh, with, uh, with a little detail. Uh, as we told you, the uh, SM SEP attitude was in plane. The uh, LEM jet attitude will be uh, more similar to an, a normal uh, service module SEP attitude. That is, it'll be LEM up out the radius vector and 45 degrees right out of plane toward the south. We uh, are going to recommend that uh, prior to jet, the configuration be with the LEM overhead hatch closed with the vent valve open and we'll uh, jet with the tunnel pressurized. Over. Okay, Joe, I understand that the uh, left jet attitude will be similar to uh, service module normal jettison, which will be up and out of plane. And, uh, as soon as I finish maneuvering the left jet attitude, I'll scramble up and close the left hatch, making sure the vent valve is open. And uh, then uh, we'll vent it, we'll uh, jettison with the tunnel pressurized. Uh, that's affirmative. And Deke says, don't forget to close the command module hatch on your way in. I'm always scared that Jack will have it closed before I get up there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Mm, about 60 miles. Okay, uh, no, uh, 50 uh, miles I think out. That's about all we've got for you right now. Uh, whenever you feel like uh, uh, you don't have any more questions at the moment. Uh, We'd like you to uh, reconfigure uh, for down voice backup, uh, and we'd like you to to do that to, to move the voice function switch to down voice backup as usual. But instead of pulling the circuit breaker, we'd like you to throw the power amp switch to off this time. Over. Okay, uh, Joe, I have one more question here. Uh, if we get a little bit ahead of time on the uh, command module full power up after we jet the service module, I'd like to go to left jet attitude early and make sure we get that part squared away and uh, sit there for a while before left jet at one hour. Now, are, will we be using a left power up to that time? Uh, there's two uh, cables which we'll probably have to disconnect on the way up through the tunnel if we're still gonna use left power. That's affirmative. Let me get word on, uh, on when we expect to uh, go off Lemp Power. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead. Roger. Uh, 
we uh, expect to go off LEM power at the time we start powering up the CSM or about minus two and a half hours. That is not a hard number, and we'll be updating you on it. As far as going to the uh, LEM jet attitude, uh, that's completely permissible as soon as you have a powered up command module and a satisfactory platform, uh, you can go there immediately. We're giving you a maximum of, uh, of one hour uh, just for grants. Over. Okay, fine, and uh, that will uh, be a lamp maneuver, I, I assume, because we lost the service module, so there's no strain there. Not firm. Oh, and uh, Jack would like to know what entry angle the mid core 7 will, will give us. Oh, uh, uh, it'll put us right in the middle of the corridor, Jim. Okay. 6.50 degrees. And uh, Jim Houston, uh, I guess uh, as a last item, we expect that it'll take us about an hour to uh, update your checklists and your timelines uh, sometime later on today. And uh, uh, we'd just like you to consider that. Uh, I expect it'll be three or four hours before we have all that stuff ready. Okay, we'll be standing by for that, and now uh, power amplifier switch is going to go off, and then I'll be going to down voice backup. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 120 hours, 47 minutes. Flight Director Glenn Lenny of the Black, Black Team is on his way to the MSC Auditorium for a change of shift news conference. Glenn Lenny is on his way to the MSC Auditorium for a news conference. Okay, we can sort of see the vague outlines of Phoenix up ahead. This is Apollo Control. The change of shift news, news conference will begin momentarily. Houston, go ahead. The Capcom now is astronaut Vance Brand. There's key KPHX Sky Harbor International. Uh, we could potentially just fly straight in. Phoenix, I think, is a the rare case where the airport is really, really close to the center of, in the MSC of the city. Aquarius Houston, over. Jim, could you give us another reading on the battery A voltage and bat charger current in the CSM, please? Bat amp coming up. Okay. And uh, sometime when you have some time to copy, I have uh, an entry stowage list to give you, which uh, specifies which equipment will be moved uh, between vehicles before uh, before. Splash down. Okay, I'll be able to copy that. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, Jim. Now, uh, I'll give it to you in two parts. The first is LEM to co command module equipment transfer. The second part will be the reverse uh, command module to LEM equipment transfer. And both parts represent deltas from the launch stowage. And here comes the first list, LEM to command module equipment transfer. First, DSEA, and I'll give you the storage location too. That goes in R13. So uh, to our left is Luke Air Force Base. And so to our forward right is Phoenix Goodyear Airport. It's recommended you stow it in R-13. Over. Okay, the VFEA has the recorder. Uh, we'll be stowed in R-13. That's a firm. Next. Limb flight data. There's a city called Surprise that over to the left somewhere. And then there's also a town R1, called El Mirage. Two. They're both close to Sun City. Interesting. Next, three PPKs in A8. Okay. Okay, 16 millimeter and 70 millimeter exposed film in R-13. Okay, next. O-2 hose screen caps on the O-2 hoses. Next. Two 70 millimeter Hasselblad cameras and stow these in B6 in the empty. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to send soon enough to just fly straight in. We'll see. It's getting hazier and hazier over here. Okay, next black and white TV camera. And recommend stow that on top of A7 and A11 in decontamination bag. Now you can see the airport there. And again, very close to downtown Phoenix. Very Thanks. interesting. Flag kit. Storage location A8. Fecal bags used, uh, R9, uh, waste management system shoot. Okay, that's the first list, Jim. Gotta keep in mind that sea, uh, that the ground is probably above sea level, so there is that. Probably, I say I can see from up there it's about a thousand feet. Okay. <laughs> and if you want to read I'm just trying to kill I'll, some I'll speed here. Um, altitude. Maybe we can get straight in. I don't know. It's this tough. I think we should fly over there. first. I guess we'll fly over first. I don't think. I don't think it's a good idea to try and force it.
Funny sound that they found. Sounds like something from Star Trek, actually. Okay, that's a uh, firm, Jim. Uh, we had a lot of noise, and uh, we didn't get the middle part, but uh, I, I think uh, that's fairly should be fairly clear to you. And uh, don't bother with the readback of, of that that we missed, unless you have any doubts. And then I'll, uh, if you write a copy, I'll give you the second list. Okay. Okay. This is CM to LEM equipment. So let's transfer. see what this does now. I mean, Cap so it goes from, I mean, it takes away some of the autogen things and, and some of the haze the because that's ISA. actually frame rate intense and then this does more. So I have my choice. I think I'll just go with this. Okay, next. Decontamination bags. Except for the ones used to wrap camera, should go in the ISA. Okay. Two LCGs, if you don't have them on already, uh, to the ISA. you wouldn't have one because you're cold enough already. That's right. Okay, and finally, four LIOH cans. Uh, the ones used in the LEM. And those can go in the jettison bag. Oh, this the, version of the airport doesn't have the best buildings, does it? Okay, time okay, to go into the cockpit. Notes. After loading the ISA, recommend secure it to the right hand restraint system. I don't know what's beeping. And uh, secure the jettison bag to the pliss on the floor. And that's all. Well, something's beeping. A little bit of flaps. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead. Uh, Jim, would you give us landing gear? PCM to high bit rate? We think maybe we might be able to lock up on your high bit rate now. Over. Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, Jim, we're getting it intermittently. Uh, we think we might get it steady and improve circuit margins. If you would, in addition, on panel 16, open the primary power amp circuit breaker. And I'll give you the next step in a minute. Okay, primary power amp is open. Okay, and uh, on panel 12, power amp to primary. Oh, well, it's not beeping now. I guess it was just, you're low, please put out landing gear, sort of beeping. Roger. Roger. 
Aquarius 13. Go ahead, uh, or rather Houston. Uh, Jim, uh, looks like we got, got a lock on, which is uh, going to improve our uh, data flow here. Only thing is we'll probably uh, lose data and, uh, and uh, probably voice too during a portion of each uh, roll. So you might expect that. The other thing is if anyone has on uh, any biomed, would you switch your, your switch to uh, your biomed switch to that position? the first uh, mass and uh, no one has on any biomed. Uh, okay. And, uh, Jack are uh, maneuvering things around right now and uh, mine is the uh, long uh, uh, department. Turned a little bit too quickly. Okay. Copy. Uh, Vance, you might be interested the way we're, the way we got this thing arranged. Uh, we have uh, one helmet attached to the comm lines, attached to the left hoses. And the guy that's got the duty wears the helmet. The other people are free to maneuver. All right. Uh, that's understandable. One guy's on the leash, huh? Uh-oh. Static. This is Apollo Control at 122 hours, 24 minutes. We plan to take another telemetered look at the command module before too long. Read out the thermal parameters. Apollo 13 is 102,019 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 5,819 feet per second. Current load uh, now is about 19 amps. Cabin pressure is 4.98 pounds per square inch. Temperature 52 degrees. Aquarius Houston. Uh, Jim, when you uh, get finished moving your stowage around and uh, Oop. It's, uh, uh, that's We'd probably like sideways. Uh, terminate the battery charge for a little while to bring up the CM. Uh, whoa, whoa. GM. Okay, maybe it was just so the the wheels are a little bit weird. Like we you can see if I turn this way uh, and turn this way. Right now, on your battery, feels weird. You have 111 amp hours, and uh, eventually we hope to have them up. Um, up to I guess I'll go to left. Uh, one other point, we. We can either uh, read that uh, procedure up again, which uh, involves cranking up the. I'm just gonna park in front of this building. Or if Jack still has it, we can use his notes. And uh, but I have one or two changes. I'm sure it's fine. Make on them. Over. Okay, I understand that uh, you'll want us to uh, terminate. Okay, so we have arrived at Phoenix. A little bit rough. Gonna pause the audio there and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.